cracking everybody welcome back to the channel new video <clears throat> i guess i'm a little bit back into my um my prison grind my prison stories um but i have to balance everything out but this is a conversation i had I just had a conversation uh regarding some stuff in the in um pelican bay shoe and this story came up in my private conversation. I said, you know what? I don't remember if I told this story on my channel. So let me go ahead and, and uh, tell you guys the story um, and see what you guys think. You know, um, when I was in prison, uh, one thing about me is I was never a snake. Even if I was caught up in something with someone, because... Don't forget, when it comes to Southerners, um, their greatest enemy, their biggest enemy, their biggest threat is each other. I know other, other groups may not want to believe that, but that's the truth. And um, But I was never a snake. Even if I was bumping heads with somebody, I never let my feelings get in the way of how things needed to go, right? Because... I'm going to let everything go the way it has to go in order for you not to be able to fix it if you go that route. Um, sometimes guys would jump the gun, make a move too soon and give the other guy an opportunity to have it turn back around. Where, yeah, maybe he got whacked, but you could get washed up. I'm not going to get into that stuff. At least that's not my intention with this video. And I don't tend to make, I intend to make that type of video. But I wanna, I wanna tell you guys a story. I was in C11, Pelican Bay Shoe, right? C11. And um, I wanna say it's 98, maybe. Somewhere around there, 98, 99, I, I don't remember. And uh, there were there were three bloods. There were three of them. I actually threw up the bean. My bad. Three bloods in our pod, right? Two of them were Sally's. One was from San Diego. The other one was from Pomona. And then there was, they were in the corner. Well, they were down the tier for me. There's only four cells on the bottom, four on the top, uh, in the shoe, Pelican Bay. And they were the last cell, or actually the first cell when you come up the, to the top tier. They were in the first cell, uh, upper tier. I was in the last cell, which was not right next to the shower. Next to me was another blood, and he was from uh, San Jose. Now, all three of these bloods had um, caught their shoe term in Calipatria. While in Cal Calipatria, there was uh, a war going on between the Southern Raza and the Blacks. Now, downstairs was a homie. Um, I'm just going to use his first initial, C. The homie C and um, his Sally were downstairs directly under the two bloods, Right? And um, C actually had, he was doing his shoe term currently at this time for stabbing the bloodshot caller. One of the bloodshot callers in Calipatria during that thing. So all three of these guys know each other, right? These three bloods and C, they all know each other. Well, you know, up there, it's very cordial, very respectful, you know, you you were that was the the home of all the legends. So you weren't gonna go in there. There was no rah rah. There was no being loud. No no cell soldiery. None of that, right? And so everything had been cool. But you know, we were aware there was, you know, the homie had whacked their their big dog, and you know, but there wasn't a the door policy was if they cracked the wrong door. You step on like, yeah, all right, you can acknowledge them, see where they're at, and then you step back in. Don't pose a threat, 
If they have an issue, let them come in the cell. You deal with it. That's just the way the understanding was with everybody. Well, one day, my neighbor's door gets cracked. The blood from San Jose. His door opens up and they call him down. Hey, the counselor wants to see you. So he goes out. Regular day, you know, counselors call for people or there's medical or whatever. People go, people sometimes refuse, whatever they want to do with their day, right? So nobody's thinking anything of it. I don't know, five, ten minutes later, the section door opens. Now, anytime a door opens, people always go to the front of their cell because they want to know who's coming in, who's going out, you know, so on and so forth. So he comes back in. We look, we see him. Okay, boom, I get off the door. He's getting uncuffed. And then I hear, I'm talking to my celly, and I hear, I hear a door open. It's not my door next door. His cell. It's not his cell opening. So I tell my celly, what are they doing? And immediately, the two bloods that are right above C's cell, they tell him, hey, homie, don't even trip on that. Go back to your cell. And I happen to see him go under the first tier. So I tell my cell, hey, I think it's going to go down right now. And next thing you know, you hear the scuffling of the feet. You guys know that sound. It's like a basketball game. You start hearing them scuffle. And you hear, you start hearing the punches, right? Boom, 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 boom. And then you hear the CO say, oh, fuck. I think I just opened the wrong cell. You no longer hear the sounds of fighting. You no longer hear the sounds of scuffling, the shuffling of the feet. What you heard, what all of us could hear, was someone being choked to death. So obviously, the one dude goes in the cell with two dudes. It's pretty obvious in everybody's mind what's happening. They're killing them. He was a big dude, uh, but he went in there and, and like I said, that you know, you heard the scuffling for a few seconds and then you just hear, <coughs> like you can hear the dude, is, he's, he's being choked out. When the cop said, oh fuck, I think I hit the wrong door, he opens the cell, uh, the, the section, the pod door, boom. One seal comes running in. The turns out he had he the CO on the tower never fully closed the door. It was still open, you know, a few inches, six inches or so, whatever it was. Um, you know, I saw the paperwork, so he said it was about six inches. The CO that ran in yells up to the tower, open the door, pushes, like squeezes his way into the cell. In one hand, he's spraying pepper spray, in the other hand, he's just clubbing people with a baton. Boom, boom, he's hitting them. Boom. He's hitting the two homies off of them, trying to beat them off of the blood that ran in their cell and stop them from killing them, right? He drags the blood out to the middle of the pod. And then uh, they, they shut the door. The homies never come out to rush the huda. They, they, the thing else, they went the huda. Close the door. Boom. There it is there. So they take the blood to medical, then they come back in. They bring out the two homies, and uh, they have marks on them from the baton, right? They bring them back, put them in the cell, and um, the next day when I go out to the yard, I go down to their cell and I say, "What happened?" And they told me, "Hey, give him credit. You know, he ran up in here, but um." What happened was C told his Sally, because he saw him coming. So he told him, step to the side, homes. I'm gonna get down with this dude head up. And C was was, you know, he was a tall dude, but that blood was a very tall dude. I'm sure there's gonna be people that are gonna remember this incident. They're gonna say, you know, they know who he was, and you know, a boy from from the blood from San Jose was a big dude. So he, C had told his Sally, hey, step to the side. I want to get down with them head up. So when he came in, that was the original scuffling and, and punches that, that we were hearing. Um, the blood started getting the better of him. I mean, it was only a couple punches, right? 
And uh, his celly tackled him. And once he tackled him, the way he fell, C was able to, to, to get him from behind. So C had him stretched out on, on the bottom bunk and his celly had him by his legs, arms and legs wrapped around his legs so that he couldn't move. The Huda came in and started beating him down, you know, beating them off of him. They let go and they went out. And so I tell him, well, look, Holmes, um, you know you got money coming, right? He said, hell no, nah, we don't got I said, homie, you got money coming. Like, if you if you push a lawsuit on these Hudas right now for this, you're going to get money. He's like, oh, hell, homie, we were killing that dude. I said, so what? Even if you would have killed him, this is Pelican Bay shoe. A CO cannot enter your cell. A sergeant cannot enter your cell. They have protocols on how to get into a cell. First of all, he has to use verbal, uh, ver uh, verbal commands. Then utilize his pepper spray. Then go to whatever next level is after that, and after that, and after that. But see, he violated the protocol. I said, I, I'm, I said, look, Holmes, if you don't want to believe me and you don't want to pursue it, that's on you. But I'm telling you right now, there's free money on you right now. Free money. The state has money for you right now if you want it. He said, there's no way, Holmes. He goes, but if you want to hook up the 602 for me, I'll file it. 602 is an inmate appeal slash grievance, inmate grievance. I said, I got you. I struck up the, the, the 602 for him. Boom. He went through the 602 process, and then he wound up getting an attorney. He reached out to an attorney. The attorney was like, this is a slam dunk right here. I leave the shoe. I go out to, uh, to B facility. Remember, this is, I had got out of the shoe August 1st of 1999, right before the riot. This is actually the month where the white and black thing kicked off, right? So I go out there. A few months later, right before the riot, C gets kicked out to the yard. As soon as he got kicked out to the yard, him being out there, it immediately caused some tension. Matter of fact, it wasn't even, I don't even think it was a few months. I think it was about three weeks after me because it was right before the white and black thing. Right before it, he comes out and the two bloods that had been in the cell above him were actually on the yard. And so when the homies were strangling them, the one that went in the cell, they were cell soldiering. Because they were cell soldiering, when C hit the yard, it became an issue that had to be addressed immediately. And it was, there were discussions and uh, it was, it was, a, the conclusion was they're going to go ahead and, you know, bygones be bygones. There's other things to do around here. That's the way it was. That's why that riot happening, the way it happened, it shouldn't happen. But anyways, now he comes out and he's like, hey, fool, I got this attorney, this and this and that. And, um. He goes, but but the attorney wants to talk to you. And I said, well, let me clear it. So, oh, he had told me too, by the way, he had told me, you write the 602, if I come up on any money, I got you. So now he's out on the yard with me on B yard. He was in, I think, four, uh, six block though, I was in four. So we're talking through the fence. And he tells me, my attorney wants to, to, to talk to you. I told him the other one that did the 602, I got you, this and this. And I said, well, let me clear this. So I reach out to one of the legends that I was very close to, right? He was uh, in C10 when this incident occurred. So I get at him and I say, you know, this is what happened. If you remember, he's like, yeah, I remember the incident. And I said, well, you know, whoop, whoop. And he says, help the homie out. Whatever he needs, help him out. Fuck these hoodas. I said, okay, cool. So I uh, correspond with his attorney, right? And then uh, the riot happens, right? Some time goes by. I want to say like seven months, eight months go by. I don't hear anything else from the attorney. I don't hear from the homie, right? And he had been getting at me too, because when the attorney, that you, I don't. That's just the way I was. Initially, when I, uh, his attorney had got at me. We had been uh, separated because of the riot. I don't remember what it was, why we were separated. But I, I got back to the attorney and I said, if you're really C's attorney, then have C 
correspond with me and let me know that you're who you say you are. And so he did. And so that's how. So C could, could contact me through his attorney or at least, you know, a message, whatever. And uh, so some time had gone by. And uh, I don't hear anything from the attorney or from C, right? So I get at the attorney. And I'm like, hey, how how is C doing? Is everything okay? How's your case going? Is it moving? You know, what's going on? Because I know you got a slam dunk. And he says, oh, uh, I, I forgot I, uh, to let you know. He said, uh, the case was settled out of court. I want to say, I I can't remember if it was like 75,000 or like 125,000, but it was a, it was a good number. When you're in the joint and you, you that kind of free money, it's excellent, man. So he got that, right? And he told me the date. It had been months. Now, again, going back to the beginning of this video, I've never been a snake. The fact that C was unaware of the free money he had coming. The fact that he said, go ahead and write that 602 and if I come up, I got you. The fact that he knew I reached out to a legend to clear it so that we can pursue this all the way. And he says, I got you, don't even trip. The fact that he did not come through, he could have been green lighted easily. And there's a lot of dudes in there, they would have fucking whacked him. They would have said, fuck that dude, he's greedy. He lied, he didn't come through his palabra shit, fuck that guy. Me? I said, fuck that guy, but to myself. I always tell people, people will always show you who they are. Just give them time to. I have other stories I'll probably tell about seeing funny stories. That's actually how this came up in the conversation I was having today. I want to name the video, The Slow Homies. And there's a couple stories with seeing them. But that was just, that's just a glimpse for those of you that don't know how the system really works and how political it is out here. His whole entire career could have been done because he didn't follow through to a promise to me. I'm a nobody, but see, I got at somebody. Anything that would have came my way, I definitely would have went and gave. The man I reached out to, I would have gave him his. Had I even mentioned to him Hey, that Vato settled the case, and this is what he got. I know that man would have said, what did he give you? And if I would have said nada, he would have said, fuck that guy. Anyways, that's the video for today. Hopefully you guys liked it. Everybody, please be safe, be smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them, right? I'm out of here.